TradingView provides a good way for generating alerts for single indicators. But if it's for multiple indicators, there is no easy way. So we have to rely on external entities uh, to combine two logics or two signals and then make some decision for buy or sell. I will show you how to make uh, these possible with make.com. I'm going to just show you how to store the signals, single or multiple, retrieve them, make some decision and decide on buy or sell. Without further ado, let's see how to make this happen. I'm going to create a data store. Here, go to the data store, click create an add data store, give some name. I'm going to give my trading data store. There, you have to create the data structure, like what you wanted to. I'm going to call this as a key value pair. I'm just going to have a value as the column because key is already built in. Uh, I will show you in short. So create this value column and save. If you now go to the data store, you can see it has already got a key value pair. Let's go to the data structure and then see if we have got yeah, key value pair. You can edit later you can add more fields if you want but let's go with a very simple one if you browse them you can clearly see that already a key is there and value as a column is present now let's go and create a scenario uh, now i'm going to show you how to store and retrieve on an individual entity basis then we'll go into the uh, next step now let's start adding a data manually give a name for a key called signal one and just give a value say buy and click ok now run this node manually now if we see it has already inserted a data let's go to the uh, data store and then see if you have got those values okay let's go to the browse and see you have got a key as signal one and value is buy now we are able to store data now let's see how to retrieve them so again open the scenario uh, let's delete this and replace it with a uh, getter record go to the again data store this time it's a getter record choose the data store and now give just a key value because you are now going to read them and now run them manually and see if you are able to get the value by right now you got you're able to now do a store and retrieve now let's stitch the webhook and the data store together Let's start creating a webhook. Uh, this is already explained pretty cleanly in the previous one, but I'm just going to uh, go through creating all those things here as well. Uh, let's create a new webhook. It's like my trading view webhook or whatever it is, uh, whatever the name you want, save it. And we need to teach the data structure which it will receive. Uh, for now, I'm going to have a very simple one with uh, alert name as signal and static ticker symbol and uh, signal as buy or sell and some price uh, now it has learned it it now knows like okay this is the format of data i'm going to receive uh, let's have it aside and now uh, let's start uh, stitching the data store uh, let's create the data store select add and then now Select uh, my trading data store. Key is something. It's going to be dynamic this time. So the key is the alert name. And the value itself is a signal. The signal in this case is either buy or sell. So in your case, the signal one can be something like a super trend, buy or sell. And the other one is like could be anything else. In this case, if you noticed, I selected the overwrite S. Yes. That's for a reason because we don't want duplicate values for the same key. Save this scenario and let's go and clear the data store because already we tested manually and had some data. Um, go through it. You can actually select these data and then delete anytime you want to. So select the data. Here it's only one. Uh, delete them and you now it's pretty clear. Go to the scenario and uh, we have to now run this scenario and uh, let's run this once it's in a testing phase we are not putting in the production so it's listening go to the postman and then hit set 
Now you can see the number one on the top, like it has executed this workflow. If you go back to the history, and it will say like it's executed. Let's go to the data store and then see if we got the data, what we sent. If yeah, I see one data there already. Go to the browse, yes, signal one and it's a cell signal. Okay, so now we need to see if the override is happening because you remember like I mentioned like the override is S because we don't want duplicate key value. Run one more time. This time change from cell to buy, but the alert name is still the single one. Uh, set it again and uh, you can see it executed. Uh, just verify it got executed one more time. Yes. And now go to the data store and then see if we have got only one entry but the cell has become buy. Yes. The signal is cell, signal one, sorry, and the value is buy. Now we are able to deal with one signal. Now let's see if we can insert another signal with the same. Uh, postman but with a new signal name signal 2 uh, run it again uh, go to and change this alert name to signal 2 and let it be buy and it's a same value just ignore for now we'll delete it later send it and again go to the data store and then see if you are able to see the another entry you can see the number 2 okay I think we have got it Yes, we have got both the signals and both signals got value buy. So you can make some decision now based on, okay, I have a signal one as buy and two as buy. Now let's enter in long order. That's how I'm going to execute this workflow, right? Now we store the data. Now we also have to stitch the data to retrieve them. All right now rename this to a uh, insert signal. Uh, just to make sure that like, you are remembering what it is for so give a name now you move this uh, on the left side and then let's try to insert a data to retrieve those two signals unfortunately uh, we have to add two nodes uh, we, we cannot retrieve two record at its simple uh, single entry uh, so i'm going to add two times one is for signal one and another is for signal two. Here also it's going to be static because you are here you know like exactly like this is a signal I am going to receive. So, uh, but later if you want to make it as a generic also you can decide. Uh, but here the logic is very simple. I'm going to follow where I'm going to have a very uh, static ones. So you can make it dynamic later. Uh, so I'm going, I know like exactly like I have signal one and signal two. So I'm going to rely on those things. So I got signal one. So rename again to saying like uh, get record of uh, signal one. And the other one will be the get signal two. So that way like, you, you can know like the first one is have a boob which you receive. Then insert the data, whatever you receive. Then try to retrieve those two and then make some decision. So now we have got all the four nodes. Uh, we have got uh, another set of workflow. Let's run one time and then see if you are able to uh, see all end-to-end -end working. Uh, send again the same data. It's It will insert into the same value. But if you look at the uh, get of this one, you can see that signal 2, we received a value as buy. And also we know the end-to-end, -end, it is working fine. Now let's make a decision call. Based on those two signal, what we are going to do? I'm going to add a router node. In the router node, like two paths are there. On the first path, I'm going to treat that as a long entry. I'm going to call as long. And for the condition, I'm going to say, if my signal one, which matches close to a pi and a logic, I'm going to add a hand logic and say like signal two also has a pi. So if both signals are by, I am going to make a long entry. So just have a like whatever the logic you want. But for my case, it is more about adding two entries. Same for the short signal. I am going to say if my signal uh, one uh, matches cell and signal two matches cell, go for a short entry. So this is all your logic, how you wanted to make your trade. 
and this is just an example I'm showing here as a very simple logic. Uh, they both are by long and both are cell in short. So now you have both entries. Now you go to add a HTTP node actually to make a uh, order. So here, uh, even in the, my previous video, I have already showed how to enter these uh, order through HTTP in a alpaca. Exactly, I'm going to use the same. I'm not going to go very deeper into it. Just add the HTTP node and fill the data as explained in my previous video. Uh, I will give you the link in my description. Uh, I'm not going to go over it. I have filled all these value as per the uh, previous video. Uh, just I have added my payload as well. If you go to uh, the alpaca, there is the order. If you look at it, there is no order. And now we have a full end to end. Uh, let's go ahead and clear the data store one time to make sure we don't have any data uh, in uh, the database. Okay, select all, delete them. Now you have deleted all this data. Let's go to the scenario, run one more time. Uh, this will be a like, very repetitive way of running and stopping. It's not in production yet. Uh, so yes, okay, let's so run. Let's start with the signal one. So for signal one, I'm going to send by. So uh, once you send it, uh, you can uh, really like see the right side, actually the action is happening. If you can see like I'm sending a signal one, uh, you see that there is an execution what will happen. Uh, this is what it is. It entered a first signal by. So still the order didn't go to, if you see the number ones, it didn't go to the router node uh http because we, it has got only one condition satisfied now let's go and send a two right now if you go to the scenario still there is no order uh if you go to the uh, scenario and uh, again it's like actually in the on state uh, run one more time with signal two this time again you saw the entry it ran now you can see the http node also having a one which means it actually hit the scenario. See, you can actually see the, the order is like placed and it is in the queue, but uh, it's uh, off market, like so it is in the pending state. Uh, so I am now, the next stage is to see like, okay, now you have got manually things are working. How do we stitch the trading view into the picture as well? Here I am actually having the uh, BTC USD and I'm having a uh, super trend as well as uh, B4. I'm going to use that as an example. The first I'm going to call that as a signal one alert name by. The name is obviously like it's uh, uh, any description, uh, but uh, the message is where uh, the actual signal will be. So go to the webhook, copy them, uh, go to the settings. I'm going to exactly copy the same payload, uh, but I have to modify a little bit to make it dynamic. Uh, I'm going to call this as signal one, which is a very static one. You can call whatever the name you want. You can, for ease of reading, you can call that as a super trend itself. Uh, ticker symbol, I am sending it as a ticker and price. I'm going to make it dynamic already as explained in my previous video. Uh, within the two curly braces, you have to call that price. There are a few values I mentioned here. Uh, there seems to be something wrong. Okay, uh, the price is not uh, included in the double quotes because it's not a JSON format. Uh, let's fix that one. Create, okay, it created the first alert. For this demo purpose, I'm using a five second so that I get this indicator uh, very quicker. Uh, add the second one. Uh, here I'm going to add the second signal, which is a B4 in this case, and call that as a signal to buy. I'm not going through the cell signal for now uh, just for the long entry i'm showing them uh, call that as a signal two and again buy and the same thing right now we have got uh, everything is set up create now we have got two signal alert set being set now all we need to wait is for the signal to arrive uh, before that uh, let's go ahead and clear the database again otherwise uh, our logic might not be working fine uh, okay looks like the data is already cleared okay maybe I, I cleared it already okay good uh, now go to the scenario and it is in on state running 
both are running let's go to the alert now or we need okay it already received the one signal already let's see if it re received signal something in this case like we received signal two first we didn't receive the signal one yet uh, see it still it didn't satisfy the long uh, the other nodes are executed uh, if you see here it's trying the signal two is like we are seeing it by but it is signal one is empty because we didn't the trading we didn't generate the signal one so in this case if you see like one of the condition didn't satisfy uh, yeah now we have to wait for uh, signal one to uh, happen uh, let me see if it like let me fast forward a bit and then see begin okay uh, okay now also we got signal two only by we didn't get the signal one by okay I, I think it looks like we have to hit for a while okay now we got a single one by so now in this case uh, let's go to the history uh, it, uh, okay now we just now uh, we got them go to the details and let's see if it executed the HTTP node yes we got the HTTP node this time executed you can see the one we got signal one by and uh, two also by so we got both now it entered the long signal both conditions satisfied so we got the execution okay let's go and see it oh okay something wrong uh, it's a btc uh, usd uh, i think we might have messed up somewhere uh okay there's a statically i have uh, entered the values by i didn't put that as a dynamic that's the case but oh, we can correct them and then make it happen like delete them and then enter the ptc uh, usd as a dynamic value which is a ticker symbol uh, you can play around with it but you get the overall idea about how to make uh, this merging this two signal add some logic and then make this thing happen that's a high level uh, goal of this video uh, hopefully you are able to really like uh, get some better uh, value out of this one uh, please feel free to subscribe to this channel if you feel share it with your friends uh, if you think like you need similar such videos please post on the comments and i would love to post more such videos looking forward to another great session from me thank you for listening